Welcome to Henrico County's State of the County Address for 2020. I'm County Manager John Vitolkis. On behalf of our Board of Supervisors and the entire county workforce, it is my honor to share this update with you, our residents, business owners, and other community stakeholders. As you can see, this year's presentation looks and feels different from the in-person event we're used to. With the coronavirus still a threat to public health, we come to you virtually. And while we cannot meet in person, I want to assure you that Henrico remains absolutely committed to engagement. As always, we welcome your ideas, concerns, and suggestions. You know, as I reflected on our accomplishments of this past year, I was struck by how much connections are a part of what we do. These connections are even more critical in these challenging times when we're often physically separated. This really resonated as a theme for 2020, how everything we do is about strengthening Henrico's connections. This means delivering the services, community needs in an efficient and fiscally sound way. This means reaching out to residents and businesses and listening to them. This means partnering with community organizations to leverage our collective talent and resources to meet common goals. To strengthen our community connections, we sometimes need to rethink the traditional governmental way of operating and doing what must be done when it must be done. We call this breaking the rules in a bureaucratic sense. We also must always be forward thinking. The decisions we make today have a direct impact on our community tomorrow, just as decisions made years, even decades ago, benefit us today. To make good connections, you need good people, people who are smart, people who care, people who have a vision for what's needed and the courage and tenacity to make things happen. That's what we have in Henrico, from our neighborhoods and businesses to our civic groups and local government. It literally takes all of us to make a community thrive. We continue to have a strong, dynamic leadership team that includes several new faces. You will hear from them in the videos that follow, covering our work in such areas as budget, infrastructure, community engagement, and more. But it all starts with the five members of the Board of Supervisors. They provide the vision and leadership. They set the tone. And they are Chairman Tommy Brannon of the Three Chop District, Vice Chairman Dan Schmidt of the Brooklyn District, Supervisor Frank Thornton of the Fairfield District, Supervisor Pat O'Bannon of the Tuckahoe District, and Supervisor Tyrone Nelson of the Verona District. Now, these five individuals have different backgrounds, styles, and perspectives, but together they form something special, a rock-solid unit that's committed to doing what's best for our county. By giving their time and energy, they have provided years, and in some cases decades, of service to Henrico. They provide what is essential in a representative democracy. They listen and engage. In other words, they connect with not only each other, but also with you. Let me share a few examples. The board has played an active and ongoing role in our budget and our response to COVID-19. Mr. Brannon, as chairman, encouraged us to move swiftly, even bringing forward emergency ordinances if needed to deal with the pandemic. With that urgency, we reached out to long-term care facilities and helped them manage early outbreaks of the coronavirus. He also suggested, and his colleagues agreed, that we continue to extend tax relief to more small businesses by raising the exemption threshold for BPOL taxes. Because of this leadership, four of every five businesses in our county now are exempt from paying these taxes. This further cements Henrico's reputation as a great place for business and investment. The board also has made sure that construction stays on schedule for our new schools, J.R. Tucker and Highland Springs High School. And here I have to pause for a minute because those two high schools, one was intended to be a renovation, one was intended to be a technical center. And ultimately, it was Pat O'Bannon and Tommy Brannon and then Dan Schmidt 
and Frank Thornton and Tyro Nelson who collectively said, let's pause. Why are we doing this? Why are we rebuilding a school that was built in the 1960s? We have talked about a new high school in the East for years. And ultimately that body came together and found a way to fund what is in essence $200 million worth of construction projects for our schools that the citizens, we could not, this could not have been possible without the meals tax that was passed. And ultimately it falls on our great superintendent and the partnership that we have with Superintendent Amy Cashwell and her administration. They've been working diligently and they assure that those schools will be ready to open next fall. Mr. Brandon and Mr. Nelson led our recovery roundtable, a work group that spent eight months studying ways to better address the addiction crisis and to ease overcrowding in our jails. As you'll hear, those plans are now in motion. On the recreation front, the supervisors encouraged us to continue to expand our offerings. In October, we opened a new bicycle pump track at Deep Run Park. We also have expanded our pickleball courts to meet the sport's growing popularity. After COVID-19 shut down sports tourism in the spring, it was great to see its return safely in the summer with the Virginia Pickleball Classic at Pouncey Track Park. You know, maybe next year we'll see Mr. Nelson playing at that tournament. Despite the pandemic, we had a strong summer with 42 tournaments generating nearly $15 million in economic activity. Vice Chairman Schmidt has been our leader on tourism and sports tourism. He currently serves as Chairman of Richmond Region Tourism. He also has helped guide plans to revitalize historic Belmont Golf Course in partnership with Mr. Thornton and the First Tee of Greater Richmond. Supervisors Frank Thornton and Pat O'Bannon are our board's longest serving members, both in their seventh terms. If you look at what's transpired in the past year, you can see how big ideas they brought forward years ago are now paying dividends. For Mr. Thornton, his vision for the Laburnum Avenue corridor has manifested in a host of community facilities, including the new Fairfield Area Library and the appropriately named Frank J. Thornton YMCA Aquatic Center. We call this the Laburnum Miracle Mile. Mr. Thornton also was instrumental in efforts to revitalize and ensure perpetual care for Woodland Cemetery through a public-private collaboration. This historic but long-neglected cemetery for African Americans represents the resting place for 30,000 members of our community, including Arthur Ashe and the Reverend John Jasper. Mrs. O'Bannon has been a tireless advocate for transparency in government and using technology to connect the community with all that we do. Thanks to her vision and leadership, the Board of Supervisors has been broadcasting its meetings on the internet for more than a decade. She also was the first to provide a virtual component to her constituent meetings. And with COVID-19, she presented a platform that now we are using for all public meetings. So it used to be that in a public meeting, if you wanted to attend a Board of Supervisors meeting, you actually had to attend in person or a planning commission meeting or any other public meeting that we have in the county, a developer meeting. And so Pat encouraged this virtual platform that we are now using, and that has changed and transformed all of our meetings. So you will see this going forward in 2021 and beyond, and you no longer have to uh, come in to express your views as a citizen. Stay tuned to those board meetings. I also hope that you will take the time to explore the other videos that are included and hear from subject matter experts leading our efforts. We talk all the time, all the time, about how our decisions must serve our community's needs, both today and in the future. In closing, I'd like to share a striking example of this. In 2013, our Economic Development Authority was working with a small but promising company to find a space where it could grow and thrive. The company, Genetworks, specializes in the interplay between a person's genetics and drugs and how they can be tailored for them to improve their health. We looked at the former Innsbruck Library and quickly finalized a lease agreement. Governments are often inclined to 
hold on to their property, thinking of potential future public uses. But we knew the library, given its strategic location, would be better suited for the right private user. Fast forward to today, in the middle of this pandemic, Genetworks has continued to grow and innovate with now 450 employees. It has expanded its services and become a leader nationwide in testing for COVID-19. The company also has expanded, occupying not only the old library, but also another building and a warehouse, all in Henrico. As our work with Genetworks shows, the decisions we make and the connections we make today will shape our tomorrow. To you, our residents, business leaders and other stakeholders, thank you for your interest and engagement. Together, we hold our communities present and its future. On behalf of our Board of Supervisors, I thank you for watching the 2020 State of the County Address and look forward to hearing from you.